It's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. G'day, this is Dr. Justin Coulson, the founder of happyfamilies.com.au, dad to six daughters, husband to one wife, and the parenting expert and co host on Channel 9's Parental Guidance, also the host of this podcast, the Happy Families Podcast. Thank you so much for listening and allowing me into your life to hopefully be useful in making your family happier. Right now, school holidays in Queensland, which means that I'm doing my best to spend as much time in the sunshine with Kylie and the girls as I can. Today's guest is another one of our very special guests for the upcoming Happy Families Hot Mess Summit. We do amazing summits here at Happy Families. If you've participated in the Miss Connection Summit, the Bringing Up Boys Summit, or the Little People Big Feelings Summit, you know that these are like world class the quality of our guests the quality of the conversation the tips tricks strategies help and ideas that we give you to make your family happier is second to none and we've got another summit just around the corner the happy families hot mess summit you can get all the details at happyfamilies.com.au and on our happy families facebook page Uh, today one of our guests ian kerner ian is the author of She Comes First. And so tell me about the last time you had sex. As you can probably gather, some of the themes that we may discuss in today's podcast may be a little bit, well, for for mature listeners, but the lightning round that we're going to have today is going to be an absolute cracker. Please welcome Ian Kerner to the podcast. So tell us how many kids you have and how old they are, Ian. Uh, I have two children, two boys, 19 and 16. Uh, Do you have a favourite? No, I love both of my boys. I will say that um, I sometimes feel like uh, my older son uh, is really cut from my cloth, like the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And sometimes I look at my younger son and he's a little bit of an alien to me a little bit. Sometimes he reminds me uh, a lot more of his mom than me, but I I love both boys and I love both connection, my connection to both of them. But uh, sometimes it feels like my my older son uh, is more directly like came right out of my head and, and exists. It's easy to understand people who are more like you, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it certainly leads to a lot. I, I certainly have a much more conflicted relationship with my older son than I do with my younger son. Yeah, curious. Uh, this is the impossible question. I always love asking it because people squirm and don't know what to say. Who do you love most, your partner or your kids? Who do I love? Well, I mean, I loved my. I wouldn't have my kids if I didn't love uh, my partner. And I certainly, as my kids get older, uh, I'm, I'm overjoyed that they're out and about and on their own and I get to really focus on uh, my relationship with my wife again and we're, we're having sort of the a lo- uh, we're, we're having the best love affair of our of our relationship in a way and it's because the kids are finally finally gone. I, I relate to that so much. We've, our youngest is eight but other than that all of our kids are in their teens or into adulthood now and we feel like we're having a relationship renaissance. It's, it's like we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. It feels so good. Yeah. <laughs> how do you uh, how do you rate yourself as a parent, Ian? Out of ten. Well, it's interesting, Justin. You know, one of the themes of my life is that I'm not just the father of my children. I've been the father of my own father. In some ways, I've been the father to my mother. I've been a very parentified figure in my parents' lives. Um, I'm a therapist. I've been a dog owner. I, I mean, I feel like I'm constantly just parenting or or, or fathering in one way or another. And uh, sometimes I look at that and I say, geez, why am I sort of like destined to be father with a capital F? And, and I feel like it's because I still have work to do figuring it out to, to get it right. So um, I, I would say there's certainly uh room for improvement i think i've gotten better as the years have gone on i think those first years and the changes in routine and the loss of connection with my wife and the 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 routines and the lack of sleep i mean that's like boot camp it's like 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 it it, it's really it was really hard um so um i have a little bit of guilt and and shame about how i showed up in my early years as a dad especially around um being temperamental and being sort of triggered and and getting angry and I think think over the years I've uh, developed much better ways of communicating with my kids and getting my point across. 
This is going to be the longest lightning round ever because I, I, I just relate so much to what you're saying and I want to, I want to jump in and empathise with you. Uh, I, I used to be a radio announcer. I worked for some of the biggest radio stations in Australia and uh, I was a terrible dad. I had no idea how to do it and it was a, a violent outburst that I had with my oldest child when she was three that led me to leave my career and go back to the poverty of being a full-time student for eight and a half years while I did my undergraduate and my honours and my PhD so that I could live the life that I now do and learn how to be a father. So I really relate to what you're saying there. I, I so appreciate uh, what, you've, what you've shared. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, what's something great that your parents did that you've tried to continue to do in your parenting? I really, when you ask that question, I really think of, uh, I really think of my dad. Uh, who actually wasn't a great father in many ways. He was kind of a, uh, I was raised, he, they divorced early. I was raised by my mom. My dad wasn't around a lot. But when I was around with my dad, my dad, he was just, he was so positive. He was playful. Uh, we had uh, fun together. Uh, it just always, um, you know, lifted me up. And uh, I guess that was because he didn't have to also be involved in, in all of the routines of parenting and, and the responsibilities of parenting. Um, I would say both my parents um, allowed me to sort of be what would be called the latchkey kid, you know, where uh, you really take care of yourself and you have a set of keys at like age eight and you're coming and going and letting yourself in and out. And a lot of people would say, oh, that's a uh, a kind of a form of neglect or oh that's so sad that uh you spend so much time on your own but um for me it was an incredible adventure it just uh, it allowed me to be independent and to sort of be in the world and have my own experiences and not be bossed around so i love the um the freedom that i was given from a very early age which really i think stands in contrast to the kind of helicopter parenting that uh we tend to do today that i i do in my own life with my sons it was it was also such a different world back then i guess you know and what's the hardest thing about being a parent uh the hardest thing is having kids who are totally dependent on us and yet want total independence from us uh, and it's managing that. It's it's managing the fact that you are completely dependent on me for almost everything, and yet you resent me so much. Right. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. you know? I hear you. Uh, if you could spend an hour with your kids at any age, what age would you choose and why? Well, I'm really enjoying – my relationships with with both of my sons now that they are are, are are young adults you know we uh they have a lot to teach me about the books that they're reading and the music they're listening to and the movies they're watching and we really get to to share a lot of the things that uh i love that we can now uh, have in common and my my younger son and i uh we have a ritual where Every night for the last few years, we just watch an episode of a, of a TV show together and we've moved through seasons and seasons of different shows together. And I love that, just sitting next to each other and taking something in. And, um, and it's great to see them grow into adults and to emerge sexually and to, they come to me for advice. And so I, I would say I'm really interestingly enjoying the, uh, the teenage and the young adult years, much, much more than the baby years. My wife loved and misses the baby years. I would never, ever want to go back to the baby years. I hear you. There is something about that smell of a newborn baby, though, isn't there? I mean, they're just the when you yeah. when you inhale at the top of the head, you go, oh, yeah, I just, it, it kind of, you, you do float away on that. It is. I think I'll age into being a grandfather well in that way. Yeah, yeah. Ian, as a sex therapist, how do you go having conversations about sex with your kids? Do they actually know that you know stuff or do they roll their eyes and go, oh, dad's just talking about sex again? Well, they certainly were embarrassed by me and my books uh, for many years. Now I think it's a little bit more of a, of a badge of pride. But, uh, you know, I would say that um, I think my wife and I model in a very healthy way what it means to be in an, in an adult romantic relationship and to show up as parents, to argue, to be responsible to each other. But it's very clear that uh, my wife and I are, are sex positive and are attracted to each other and are affectionate with each other. So um, I think that the best educating I have done has 
has been the silent education and simply been the modeling of how to be in a relationship. Last handful of questions. If you could go back to you as a young parent having one of those tough moments and being inexperienced and over it and exhausted, what advice would you give yourself? Cool down. Come back after you've cooled down a little bit. Don't escalate. Uh, take time to, um, you know, cool down. Um, approach things uh, with love and, and compassion. Sometimes with older children, realizing that, you um, you can't give them the motivation they have to find it themselves and so anything that i do give now as a parent to uh my sons i i do so because i i want to and um i don't have the expectation that they will accept it and so if they don't accept it i try not to get angry because it was my choice uh to give it to them or to try yeah Um, letting go nice Uh, The last question for you, Ian Kerner, author of So Tell Me About the Last Time You Had Sex. What's been your biggest win as a dad? Uh, Well, you know, with my older son, um, he's had a lot of uh, difficulties, emotional and psychological, uh, throughout the years. And it's been a it's been a real, real struggle to keep him sort of uh, grounded. And so um, I just yesterday drove him up to his uh, college orientation. He took a a gap year. I mean, a gap year. He didn't go <laughs> last year, uh, but he's going this year. And, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't think he would get there and, um, he wants it. So it's not being pressured by me. Um, but I'm really still believing in him, you know, I'm believing in him in ways that I think even my wife doesn't believe in him. So I think it's, um, it's holding on to my, my belief in him and um, the times where that belief is validated. What a delightful conversation. More great interviews coming up on the Happy Families podcast every day during the school holidays. Really hope that the school holidays are great for you and that you're enjoying that break from the school routine. Kylie and I return to regular Happy Families uh, podcast programming from Tuesday, October the 4th. As always, the Happy Families podcast is produced by Justin Rulon from Bridge Media and Craig Bruce, our executive producer. Thank you, Craig. If you want more information about making your family happier or about the upcoming Happy Families Hot Mess Summit, which I know I've said it before and I don't want to sound like I'm overselling it, but it literally is going to be the best summit that we have ever done. Uh, Visit us at happyfamilies.com.au or check out our Facebook page, Dr. Justin Coulson's Happy Families. Happy Families.